And welcome back to QTV. I'm Michael James. I'm Sharon Mulheron. And I'm Matthew Bowe. Uh, now QTV is back tonight for our fifth episode. Uh, we haven't been shut down and uh, the ACL has not attempted to uh, close the show. We're very happy to have you joining us again. We are of course the only GLBTIQ program in Queensland. And joining us on the couch tonight, we have Ricky Menzies, who has come to talk to us about the Lesbian Health Action Group, who they are, what they do, and there'll be more about that later. And we'll also be talking about all the awesome events that'll be happening this weekend, so we can get all the details. Looks like a very exciting show, but first of all, we'll get on to tonight's news. Now, as we reported at the uh, last episode, that New Zealand has legalised same-sex marriage, making it the 13th country worldwide and the first country in the Asia-Pacific region to approve marriage equality. On Wednesday, France legalised marriage equality and adoption of children by same-sex couples. Unfortunately, not everyone celebrated this historic moment with the staging of violent protests to oppose the legislation. President Francois Hollande has yet to sign the bill, and in the meantime, opponents are hoping to build up enough pressure to force him to back down from signing it. But Justice Minister Christian Torbrera commented with a hopeful note saying, this law brightens the horizons of many of our citizens who were deprived of these rights. It grants new rights, stands firmly against discrimination and testifies to our country's respect for the institution of marriage. Yay, Yay! I'm so excited. That's great. Well, the world's getting it all happening. 13, 14, will we be 15? Well, we can only hope, can't we? We can keep hoping. Because guess what? New South Wales Premier Barry O'Farrell has publicly declared strong support for marriage equality and challenged federal opposition leader Tony Abbott to allow conscience vote on the issue. In his first public comment after the New Zealand legalised same-sex marriage, Premier said, My view, a view that I've come to in recent years, is that as a Liberal who believes in commitment and family units are one of the best ways in which society is organised, I support the concept of same-sex marriage. We should, as governments, be encouraging commitment. As societies, we should be encouraging commitment because ultimately people caring for each other work side by side with governments who create better communities. In another interview, the Premier elaborated further, saying that government shouldn't deny the right to loving relationships they extend to other families. That is just the best thing ever. That's the, the total thing that we want them to, to focus on because it's not about marriage or Christianity. It's about families and bringing people together and governments who say they're conservative and about families actually supporting that. Absolutely. So, and that's mm. how it came about in the UK. It was the liberal equivalent in the UK that mm. said we have to support the family unit and that's why it's important. Mm. So it's the, the, the Liberal Party in Australia needs to get hold of this. And I think slowly but surely, we've seen that. We've seen uh, one of our guests here. Um, mm. And they're slowly creeping out of the woodworks ar around the country. We're going to see more of that support one day. <laughs> and people will be happier. Mm, you know, walk your talk, government. In other news, Beyond Blue and other mental health groups stated that Australia's Christian leaders should take responsibility for the damage caused when gay members are rejected or encouraged to undergo conversion programs. Chris Tanti, head of Youth Mental Health Foundation Headspace said, I'd like to see the churches take the position that psychiatrists took many, many years ago, and that, that is, it's not an illness, it's quite natural for some people to be same-sex attracted. The National Depression Agency's chief executive, Kate Carnell, also commented, we know that discrimination is a major contributing factor to mental health issues in the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender and intersex community. So if their own belief structure is also being undermined by their church and they're being excluded on the basis of their sexuality, it's a double whammy. 
Absolutely. I mean, those things are just ridiculous. I watched mm. one of the documentaries by Louis Thoreau mm. um, on taking people out into the bush and, and trying to convert them. They're just mm. insane. Like, they're, they're messing people's minds up. Mm. And yet the majority of our community here in Australia support people for just being who they are. It's hard. It's what goes on behind the scenes is these groups function through families and it all goes on behind the scenes and suddenly, you know, so-and-so who's a teenager has been sent off by their family to a, a supposed psychologist and you have to wonder about these people's credentials, you know. How, can you ever really try to brainwash someone and achieve a good outcome? I, I don't think so. And you got to worry about a lot of people, I think. Mm -hmm. Indeed. But uh, speaking of worrying about people, uh, last week in Darwin, security staff of an LGBT nightclub, Throb, was fired for not stepping in to immediately stop a violent attack tasting, taking place just outside the club. Last year, in May, the footage was revealed, and last week it was released to social media by an assistant, um, and it showed that somebody was being attacked by two men from outside the nightclub, with the security guard staff watching by. The club's three directors responded quickly as the upsetting footage spread out, saying the actions of the security guards do not reflect our attitudes, principles and beliefs, which are well known by our patrons, who have enjoyed socialising in the secure and safe environment that Throb has offered over the years. The directors of Throb claim they had not seen the footage in question before this week and have immediately severed all ties with the security guards involved. We are massively disappointed and dismayed by what has happened and we will do all that we can to ensure like nothing like this ever happens again. Awful stuff. Yeah, but, you know, it's just, well, at least they've done something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. that's great. But in happier news, Sharon. Yeah, from <laughs> some news from the US, the Boy Scouts of America have announced that they may end their long-standing ban on openly gay scouts. However, the ban on gay adults from serving as leaders still remains to continue. AT&T Chief Executive and Chairman Randall Stevenson, a Boy Scouts board member, advocated the issue saying, I fully support the BSA Executive Council's resolution to ensure all youth have the opportunity to participate in, however, remain silent about banning gay adults. Rich Ferraro, Vice President of the Communications and Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, commented that by refusing to consider an end to its ban on gay and lesbian parents, the Boy Scouts have missed an opportunity to exercise leadership and usher the organisation back to relevancy. We're living in a culture where until every young person's family is treated equally and able to contribute, the Boy Scouts will continue to see a decline in both membership and donations. Mm. Uh, remarkably progressive for at least a small step anyway. Mm. As of July, all calls to Australia's LGBTIQ telephone counselling will get answered for the next two years. The federal government has announced it will be funding $3.5 million into a new national project for LGBTIQ Australians to have support through a national hotline, instant messaging and video calling. Currently, there are about 200 volunteers throughout the nation by the phone lines, which at times is not enough. Rebecca Reynolds, Managing Director of New South Wales Gay Youth Organisation 2010 and Gay and Lesbian Counselling Service New South Wales said, The benefit of having this new service is that if a volunteer doesn't log in in a particular state or there is only one volunteer in and they're on a call already, that number will still get answered, but it will be answered by another volunteer in another state. Isn't that awesome? It's That's fantastic. just awesome. We also Absolutely. wanted to pay tribute tonight to Chrissy Amphlett, um, Australia's rock royalty from Divinals. We wanted to show our support and thanks for all the work she's done and send our thoughts to her family on her passing. And it was very important for us to mention because it was one of her um, dying wishes that she wanted to use the, the song, I Touched mm. Myself. Uh, as, as an awareness song for uh, people for breast cancer. Is that mm. what you were telling me earlier? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. fantastic. Is it? It's, it's absolutely... turned into a great, great means. Yeah, that's brilliant. And we're very sad to see her gone. 
Um, but that is all of the news for this week. And if you have any stories or issues uh, that you'd like to see us covered, we would really like to hear from you. Make sure you come to our Facebook page um, or come and tweet us or even email steve.whiteley at 31.com.au and tell us what you would like to see covered on QTV. Because okay. not only is Get it, on your phones. Yeah, Hurry not up. only is it your our show, but it's also your show. <laughs> so we'll be back right after these uh, very quick breaks with our next guests. Uh, welcome back to QTV. We've got our guest for the night tonight is the fabulous Ricky Menzies. I say she's fabulous because she's got these awesome killer red heels here, which she has to show you. Um, <laughs> now, Ricky is joining us from the Lesbian Health Action Group, and she's come to tell us a little bit about what you guys do and, and what's been going on around the traps. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you very much for joining us, Ricky. Oh, my pleasure. Now, so, let's start. Lesbian Health Action Group. What is it? Okay, well the Lesbian Health Action Group's been around since about 2008 um, and it's a group of volunteers from the community, some women working within the professional capacity around health um, and some just regular community members all with an interest in improving uh, basically the health and well-being of same-sex attracted women in Queensland. Yeah, I find it the interesting. Is there, uh, I suppose, a, a particular uh, amount of, of health issues that are, are pertinent simply to same-sex attracted women? Um, it's not that there's particular lesbian health issues per se, yep. but there are some health issues that a lot of women will also have that lesbians are probably a little bit more prone to. So as an example, um, breast cancer. Okay. So whereas some of the protective factors of breast cancer are having children, breastfeeding and using oral contraceptives. Okay. And that's not been a part of many lesbians' lives, so it actually mm. puts them more at risk. Wow, um, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and some of the risk factors are smoking, and obesity. So they're also something that we see quite a bit of within our community. Wow. Oh, I wanted to ask as well, do you focus mainly on the physical health issues or do you also focus on mental or psychological? Everything. Okay. So it's about health and wellbeing. So yeah. um, every year we do a survey of the community here mm -hmm. in Queensland and mostly at International Lesbian Day and mm -hmm. we use the findings from that survey to inform the work that we do. Um, over the last three years, mental health and domestic violence have been the top two issues reported by women in the community. Mm. So wow. Domestic Violence Month is May. Yep. Are you guys doing anything specific for Domestic Violence Month? We are. Mm. So seeing as that's been reported for three years now, um, this year we're looking at doing a campaign called Love Is. Mm -hmm. So in the past, we produced a resource called Queer Without Fear, which was actually for the whole community. Mm. It's for LGBT, family and domestic violence. Um, but this year we thought the community education was probably the way to go as well. So there'll be workshops mm -hmm. um, looking at healthy relationships. And this isn't just with your partners, it's also relationships with family members mm. and friends. Um, and the campaign will also highlight the unhealthy aspects of a relationship, which is what we hear about a lot, you know, yeah. this is abuse, that is abuse, something else is abuse. Yeah. And for people that are experiencing that, I think sometimes they don't realise what's the healthy side. Mm. So maybe I'm seeing this in my relationship, what should I be aiming for? So the campaign will actually highlight healthy and unhealthy aspects. That's a really good campaign and I'm sure a lot of women will really benefit from that. Um, how do women find out what's happening within the community? Do, is there a way that they, well, how do they get in touch with Lesbian Health with Action Group? With the Lesbian Group? Health Action Group? Yeah. Um, we have a Lesbian Health page as part of Healthy Communities website. Mm. Um, so that's www.qahc.org.au slash lesbian. Um, but they can also email us at womenshealth at qahc.org.au as well. So you said it's for same-sex attracted women, so obviously you don't focus specifically on lesbians? And no. No, great. Even though we're called the Lesbian Health Action Group, we, mm. the term is used quite broadly. So um, we're looking at any person who identifies as a woman mm -hmm. who is attracted to other women. So you know, the group is open to um, gender diverse women, so mm -hmm. trans women, mm -hmm. um, and bisexual women, pansexual mm -hmm. women, and whatever other identity that people may choose. That's fantastic to hear. Acceptance is so important with that sort of thing is, you know, the last thing you want when someone's having health issues is to feel more excluded. Yeah, mm. exactly. And that's one of the other campaigns that we're looking at later in the year mm. is called I Am. Mm. And it's around identity and how women identify within this community and highlighting the various different types of identities that we see within the so-called you know, lesbian community. Mm. Um, and that's a campaign we'll be looking at a little bit later in the year as well. 
Great. So are you funded? Sorry, Michael. But... Um, no, no, we're not. So um, we, part, we started out um, as an area of healthy communities where there was no funding. There was mm. been no funding for lesbian health. Um, so what we've done over the years is fundraisers. So the very first year was our Boobalicious calendar. Mm. Um, so that was to raise awareness about breast mm. care in the, in the lesbian community. Then we focused on pap smears and cervical cancer, and that was called In the Pursuit of Pappiness. That was our next calendar. <laughs> Um, we've been very lucky that every year, um, for, the, for the first few years that the International Lesbian Day was run by City Liquors, we got the door takings. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last two years, we've actually run that event ourselves. So that's been our major fundraiser. You guys do lots of events. You, you've got more of a presence than I knew, obviously, not being a lesbian myself. <laughs> Um, but uh, I got told something before, um, and I have absolutely no idea what this is, but I'm, I'm very, very curious. Can you tell me what exactly is the, the Purple Pussy Posse? Okay, so the Purple Pussy Posse is our outreach team. So all of our um, volunteers wear a purple t-shirt when they go out. So people that might have seen other um, quack volunteers would have seen them in a black t-shirt. Well, the girls have got a purple t-shirt. So um, we call ourselves the Purple Pussy Posse. And probably the place that most women would have seen us would have been at Scarlet. We've been doing outreach at Scarlet for, I don't know, probably three or four years now. Where and we... why I might not have seen you? Probably, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what we do there is a designated driver campaign. So if someone comes up to us and says, look, I'm driving my friends tonight, I'm not drinking, they get a wristband mm. um, and the venue will give them free soft drink all night. That's fantastic. Um, and then we also do... Uh, drink spiking awareness. A lot mm. of people don't think drink spiking happens in lesbian venues. Um, not a lot, but people do move on to other venues where it's much more prevalent. So mm. we put little stickers on bottles and glasses that have been sitting around just to show that if I can put a sticker on there, someone could have tampered with your drink. That's such a great idea. That's it's, very been, cool. it's been really well received. Mm. LHAG have monthly meetings. Yes. Yes, we do. Just quickly, it's the first Tuesday of the month, is That's that right? That's it, first Tuesday of the month, 6.30 at 30 Helen Street. Excellent. Mm. We're talking about being just quick. Let's have our quick six. I do love our quick six. Okay. <laughs> are, you, are you ready for the quick six? I think so. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to get us started with our first uh, quick six questions for the evening. So, starting us tonight, do you believe in love at first sight? I believed in lust and limerence at first sight, and that over time, love can develop when intimacy does. Ooh. Oh. Interesting. Uh, what is the last book you read? Uh, the last book I read, actually, it was called Lesbian Desire. Mm. <laughs> and um, <There> we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm wondering after you read that book, uh, if you could be invisible for a day, what would you do? <laughs> oh, to be invisible for a day, be a fly on the wall. Oh gosh, I, it's the world would be my oyster. I could be anywhere, couldn't I? Um, I'd have to think about that one. What's your all-time favourite TV show or song? Um, my all-time favourite song would be Dancing in the Moonlight. It, it came out when I very first came out about 12 years ago and it just epitomised the freedom that I felt at that particular time. That's great. Uh, my first one, do you sing in the shower? No, I used to. Liar. <laughs> Everyone sings in the shower. No, I actually, I actually don't. My, um, my neighbours... Lounge room is too close to my ensuite, <laughs> so I'm sure they don't want to hear that. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, who is your favourite queer celebrity? Ooh, oh, gee whiz. Um, That's a quick six. It is a quick six. <laughs> oh dear, I'm so what's, your what's your brain? definition of queer, I suppose? Yeah. So someone that's a little bit outside of the norm uh, would probably have to say pink. Awesome, yeah. fantastic. Very nice. Thank you very, very much for doing our quick six. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, no, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure ha having you. Uh, I've got some very interesting answers tonight. Mm. So, uh, it's, I hope uh, you boys learnt something new. Oh, I think it's fantastic about all the things you said about the, the health issues and lesbians having more you know, prevalence. I, I had no idea that breast, you know, breastfeeding and childbirth made such a big difference. So that's great mm, to know. Thank definitely. you. So, well, you're going to ask. Go on then. I was going to ask. No, you can ask. <laughs> Ricky, would you like to join us for the last segment? Sure, that'd be great. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Ricky Menzies uh, from the Lesbian Health Action Group will join us for our final segment tonight here on the couch uh, when we come back for our final segment here tonight on QTV.
Welcome back to QTV. Now there are a couple of exciting upcoming events we'd like to remind all of our viewers out there to check out. Now don't forget, Mixed Nuts are back. Last week's guest, Martini Ice, will be performing on Saturday the 27th uh, with a new show and a new cast, bringing light-hearted camp and ever so much fun to uh, Surface Paradise RSL of all places. <laughs> uh, all money raised on the night will go towards Expanded Horizons Q-Space, an LGBTIQ youth program that promotes healthy living. For more information, please check out their Facebook page, even. Now, the uh, CWC Citizens Welfare Committee Cabaret is returning for their Anzac tribute on Saturday the 27th as well at the Iman Imaginations nightclub from 7 p.m. until midnight. Shows will be held at 8, 9, 10 and 11 and all proceeds will be going to Queensland Positive People. So be sure not to miss it. Sharon. Queensland Positive People is a great organisation to they be supporting. Fantastic. Um, now, Ricky's got the event coming up for um, Lesbian Health Action Group. It's a Love Is Workshop. Uh, That's right. And um, registrations for that will close next Wednesday, so there's still some vacancies. People just um, email healthy communities at either women's health at quack.org.au or eRider, R Y D E R, at quack.org.au to register. Okay, and that closes on the 1st of May? On the 1st of May, yep. and the workshop's actually on the um, 11th. 11th of yep. May. Yep. So it's on at West End, um, down at Vulture Street, and attendees will be exploring existing potential relationships between lovers and friends and families, and talk about healthy and unhealthy relationships and heaps of other interesting activities. Now, for the ladies who want to get out and party, um, we've got Zip Girl Factory coming up in the valley on Friday the 10th of May. It starts later at night at 10 p.m. Um, or if you want to get out a bit earlier, you can go out at 8.30 on the Saturday night. Um, that will be Scarlet at the St. Paul's Tavern. It's going to be a Hollywood theme this month, and I take mm. it the Purple Pussy Posse will be there. They will be. I might encourage them to wear tiaras or something. <laughs> That's a great idea. Now, um, you won't probably be wanting to wear your tiara if you're going to go out for Brisbane hiking dikes. Um, they have a weekly walk <laughs> on every wedding. <laughs> day but if you want to wear your tiara I'm sure you can um, they start at West End Coffee Club at 6 p.m. for an hour and it's a five kilometer loop around West End so you finish with a coffee and a meal back at the coffee club they also hold regular bushwalks and other outdoor activities so be sure to um, check out their website as well and on Tuesday after, I remember meeting you at GLBN for the first time. So yep. um, on Tuesday, Brisbane's Gay and Lesbian Business Network, GLBN, will be holding a special event with the Honourable Michael Kirby. He'll be talking about why sexuality inclusion is good for business and attendees will also be able to ask questions uh, next Friday on May the 3rd. Uh, there also will be their monthly Fruits with a Twist event. Uh, it's a social event for professionals and business owners to mix with other like-minded people. Uh, this event is it's socially focused, it's got a business twist as well. Uh, and make sure to check out their website for tickets uh, as you do need to pre-range. You know another great thing is that they actually donate back to various organisations and Lesbian Health Action Group benefited from last month's yes, GLBN, did. didn't it? Oh. Yeah, we did. That, so that was really wonderful. We benefited from the raffle on the night. Mm. Yeah, and it's a great place to network with other business people and everything, isn't it? it I found it really, really useful. Mm. So, um, and I think that the Michael Kirby event mm. will be very interesting. Sounds fantastic. I'm yes. very, very excited. I, I don't think I'm going to make it along because I have other prior commitments at the time, um, but it looks fantastic. Now, mm. something you mentioned earlier about Scarlet was I saw on Facebook the other day, I don't think it's a fantastic idea, the Scarlet owners put out the idea of maybe having a, a once-off, once a year, maybe, um, mixed event for Scarlet, mm. bringing, actively bringing the lesbian community and the rest of the GLBTIQ community mm. together. How cool is it? I can drag you mm. guys along to Scarlet. And you'll <laughs> actually be we can to see where you go. I would absolutely <laughs> love to go. Does that mean we get to go to one of your yeah. parties, though? We'd like yeah. to come back parties. and see what the Me on the couch do. with yeah. the cat. That's not really a party. Well, when you're not at home with the cat, there are some interesting events, which I, I think if, if the, um, the, the ladies of the community would like to come to as well we would really 
should be looking at bringing all of these things together. Mm. There is actually a community cafe going to be on the 5th of May. It's going That's to right. be held at the Powerhouse and it's going to, the theme of it is Dancing Across the Difference. It's from 1.30 to 4.30 on the Sunday and um, you can reach Tim at communitycafe at gmail.com um, if you want to respond to go along to that. So, I mean, the Are You Okay Rainbow Okay um, day was an awesome day. I mm. think this one will be the same. Yeah. But one thing I do I do want to ask Ricky you guys have a showcase coming up don't you yes we do so that's another event that lesbian health action groups holding um, one of the things that we saw from the surveys was that people didn't feel that they were connected to community mm. and they don't know where to find out what's going on so we thought that one way of giving back is to invite all the small community run groups mm. whether they're social groups support groups um, things like hiking dogs, so physical activity groups, or um, even hobby groups, you know, there's arts a comic readers, mm. arts and crafts. Invite them all along to healthy communities and give them that opportunity to talk a little bit about their group mm. and what they do so that people can find out about them, but also to support people to start their own group. So there'll mm. be workshops on how do you start a group, how do you maintain a group, how do you get people to come along, those sorts of things. And that will be held on the 25th of May. So that's going to be an event in the afternoon. That and um, mm, yeah, fantastic. so we're still looking for a few groups to come along. Mm. Uh, so if anyone's interested, they're running a small group and mm. we haven't contacted them already, definitely get onto Health Communities and let so them know. Cool. Uh, we'll we have uh, all of the details uh, mm. for getting in contact will yes. be available tonight, which yeah. will be fantastic. Um, now, there was uh, our usual, uh, the Brisbane Hustlers games so, uh, every Saturday, which is at uh, three o'clock at various locations. So make sure you check out the Hustlers Facebook page. Um, recapping what you mentioned last week, don't forget Amali Ward's album is out on May 3rd, which is great. And um, in the, uh, the music vein as well, I found the most fantastic video clip I've seen since uh, Mappamore's Same Love uh, the other day. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's called Define Me. It's by an uh, American man who I thought must have been a, a famous um, singer, but he doesn't appear to have much of a profile yet. But this video is brilliant. Uh, it's a song all about labels and, and what people use to define us and all those things. And it's just this beautiful video clip that's just got two people literally stripping down with the words people use to define them mm -hmm. painted all over them and mm -hmm. lyrically it's brilliant musically it's brilliant so we'll have the link up uh, make sure you check it out we've got to head off in a minute do we have we one do. more thing Sharon? i do can you guys facebook us let us know what you think tweet yes. us let us know what you think we want to keep in contact with you and we need you to keep in contact with us so that we can do that and tweet sharon because she loves it and tweet matt because he's an addict <laughs> he um, is and tweet me because i like the attention now um that's, <laughs> that's true. all we've got left for this week so uh you can catch us online all our twitter handles jump on the facebook page let us know what you love about this show let us know what you don't particularly like about this show uh because it's for you and it's for us and together we'll work and, and make it even more brilliant each and every week uh thank you very much for tuning in. Have a great week, guys. I'm Michael James. I'm Sharon Mulheron. And I'm Matthew Bowe. See, See you next week.